Well, here's a question for you. Do we have too many human rights? And does human rights legislation actually put us all at risk? Because it protects people who want to do us harm. Former Defence Secretary Ben Wallace has criticised what he called the lunacy of laws that prevent Britain from carrying out raids abroad to capture terror suspects. He said the UK was being forced to kill enemies of Britain or leave them to continue plotting attacks. Uh, I know the human rights issue has raised its head as well, quite a lot, to say the least, when it comes to people crossing the channel, whether or not they're allowed to be housed on barges, in military bases, returned to their own countries, etc., etc. Do we have too many human rights? Is there such a thing? I'm joined now by international human rights lawyer, David Hay. David, do we have too many human rights? I think, good, good afternoon, Patrick. I think from, from my side, the short answer is no. You know, we, there, there, there are some basic human rights which various instruments protect. The issue that we're seeing again and again and again is how those have been interpreted. And obviously things change over the years when you look at when the European Convention on Human Rights was put in. We're in a different world. And it may be the interpretation hasn't kept up with the, the, the modern situation that we're in. But we certainly don't have too many human rights. OK, all right. I mean, the protection of those human rights, I thought, really, was to protect people like you and I who aren't terrorists, at least not last time I checked, right? But if they end up protecting terrorists and putting us all at risk, that's bad human rights, isn't it? Well, I think the, the, the issue that you have with human rights is for them to be effective, human rights laws, effectively they need to be universal. So saint or, or sinner, because at the point of deciding who is a sinner, then you bring into things like fair trials. Now, the issue that we're seeing with, with, with Ben Wallace boils down to, uh, and it's something that's been going on for decades, essentially, in the, the European Courts of Human Rights, and it boils down to what is jurisdiction. Because under the Convention, the European Convention, we, we the UK, are basically saying that people in our jurisdiction hmm. are afforded the human rights in the Act. And then when you're looking at, say, for instance, a, a military raid in an overseas country, if we shoot and kill that person in that raid, they're not in our control. But if we, and this is where this, this ridiculous, absurd situation has come from, if we capture them, then they're in the jurisdiction of the UK, technically, and you need to then afford them the human rights. So yes, that's an absurd situation, and it's one which the Conservatives were going to address in the Bill of Rights, which they scrapped, yeah. which specifically took it out of that, you know, the, the, the scenario. But also, you know, as, as we know, they dropped that. Oh, look, I get that, you know, people like me, essentially a gob on a stick, might be a nightmare for somebody like you who is a human rights lawyer. But I look at this now and I just l read what Ben Wallace has said. There are a number of individuals who pose an imminent threat to the UK who I would prefer to have captured rather than deal with by a strike. But we can't do that. But then I would look at that and go, well, so what? We break a human rights law once by capturing a jihadi. And no one's going to complain. I agree. I mean, it, it is it is absurd. But equally, those same human rights laws protect our forces when they go to, for instance, Afghanistan and the British, the Ministry of Defence hasn't given them enough equipment to protect them. So it protects them in those situations. It equally stops foreign countries doing military raids in our country without knowledge of our um, uh, 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 government um, and abusing people's human rights. So it goes both ways, but it, it, it does, it is something that needs attention because that is an absurd situation. I mean, where I mean, he goes on, he goes on sorry to interrupt, but David, he, I mean, he goes on to say, right, if we had found Osama bin Laden, we wouldn't have been able to launch the raid that the US did, which I think is, by most people's metrics, absolutely absurd. I mean, we, 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 I, 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 we, we could have found the guy who masterminded a plot to you know, fly planes into the Twin Towers, etc. We could have found that guy and we wouldn't have been able to do anything like the Americans did. Yeah, correct. And, that, and, and that's absurd. And that's, I think, down to, because the law, the, the law basically says jurisdiction. And it's the judges that have interpreted what is or isn't jurisdiction. Uh, um, and that's the problem. Right, and, right. And this is, this is the important bit of this discussion now, which is about the application of the human rights, isn't it? Because we see it a lot, don't we, where... Again, from where I'm sitting, I think human rights laws are there for the taking. Because I think it's quite easy to manufacture certain claims, whether it's, oh, I've got a deep-seated fear of water, therefore I can't be housed on this, this migrant barge, for example. Or, you know, I, I'm, you know, a, a homosexual, I can't possibly go back to my, my home country, or all of that stuff. It does appear to me that it's quite easy to game the system when it comes to human rights uh, at the moment. And you, know, you do see it as well. I mean, like, for example, the, the, some of the uh, 
uh, people who were convicted for the grooming gang scandals in Britain, which are like the lowest of the low, you know, invoking human rights laws to try to make sure they can stay in the UK and all of this. And uh, I think it just sticks in the craw a little bit. So, so do judges need to be given a rocket? I mean, how does that work? I think that's the, that's the thing. The, the law is, is fairly straightforward in that it says, for instance, in this case, jurisdiction. Now, normally we would assume that meant the UK. This has now been expanded to mean places within our control, people within our control. It's the judges over a couple of decades in the European courts that have and, and, and literally gone backwards and forwards in what they believe is and isn't jurisdiction. So it's, it's, it's ever moving. And it's, so it's the judges that perhaps need to be looked at and addressed and, and, and the interpretation of those laws. Now, like I said, it was the Bill of Rights had that gone through, specifically had a, a, a provision to, to pull out of the uh, uh, jurisdiction military operations. But, but then by doing that, then that could also lose protection for our troops if the military of defense for instance doesn't provide them with the equipment they need so it's 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 a very difficult situation but i i absolutely agree with you there's some absolutely absurd cases and the laws are being abused um and that that needs to stop yeah i, I mean i look at who who enforces that yeah you know, what what nationalities are enforcing laws that could mean that british citizens are put at risk by not being able to go and capture an isis jihadi Abroad, I mean, do they include countries like Luxembourg and San Marino, for example? Well, absolutely. I mean, in this, in this case, it's the European Court of, 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 of uh, Human Rights, effectively. Um, oh. And in certain cases, our own, our, own, our own courts as well, applying that law. So effectively, but what we've got to remember is that previous governments entered as into these obligations. Yeah. They signed these laws and brought them in. So what we need to do, and I say it a few times before, if we want to get out of them, then we, our government needs to change the laws and pull us out of these jurisdictions. So we're gonna, we, would have to, we would have to leave the ECHR? In, in, in this scenario, I think, I think we would. I mean, I'm not in favour of that, um, okay. but I think in this scenario, unless we can uh, you know, change the applicability of how the, the, the current interpretation of these laws is, yeah, we'd have, we'd, we'd have to leave. Um, and you know, even when the Bill of Rights was being proposed, there was a provision, like I said, that would pull us out of this jurisdictional problem when it came to military operations. But that would be at complete loggerheads with the existing ECHR. So you'd have then had more court battles. So I think that, you know, a government does need to address this, um, but I don't think the one that we've got has got the time or, or, or the ability to. And they've, as I mentioned, they pulled the Bill of Rights. No, yeah, exactly. Look, David, thank you very much. Fascinating discussion. Really, really informative stuff. David Haig there, his international human rights lawyer. I, I, I am deeply interested in what Ben Wallace has had to say. I think many people, not all, but many people regard Ben Wallace as being a pretty straightforward kind of chap, former defence minister, of course. You know, he's basically blasting the ECHR, just saying it's lunacy that now, and as you heard there, that there can be judges from places like Luxembourg and San Marino and other minnow nations, really, who could have a say, not just in the old border debate about who we can and can't deport, for goodness sake, which I think should be a complete matter of sovereignty, complete matter of national sovereignty, but also about whether or not we can launch operations abroad that could end up saving lives, certainly when it comes to protecting ourselves from terrorists. I don't see why any other country in the world should have any say over that. But alas, here we are.